Do you want your AI digital model to promote a specific product, just like a professional influencer? Or maybe you're interested in training a Flux LoRa but feel stuck because cloud GPUs are expensive and your local GPU has limited VRAM? Imagine if you could achieve top-notch results without relying on expensive setups. Hi and welcome back to AI Economist. Today we are going to locally train a Flux Dev LoRa, all inside ComfyUI. I'm going to show you how to correctly install the required nodes and also show you the workflow and settings to use for both low and high VRAM GPUs. So before we start, if it's your first time here on this channel, I share free tutorials on how to use ComfyUI in the AI digital modeling world. Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get my latest videos. So let's get started. All right, let's begin with the installation process. On the Kijai Comfy UI Flux Trainer GitHub page, you'll notice a disclaimer from Kijai stating that he has limited experience in the LoRa training field and has only recently started using Flux. He emphasizes that this is an experiment and requests that people do not ask him for training advice. This workflow is experimental and still has several issues, but I'll show you how to avoid these errors. A big thank you to Kijai for creating the custom nodes that allow us to train Flux models on Comfy UI. To install these custom nodes, you first need to clone the repository using Git, then install the dependencies from the requirements.txt file. If you're using the Comfy UI portable version, you can use this command here. It's also important to have PyTorch version 2.4 or above. In my previous videos, I've demonstrated how to create a virtual environment and install ComfyUI correctly, and I don't recommend using the portable version. In our ComfyUI folder, open a command prompt and activate the virtual environment. After that, type the command pip list to display all installed packages and their versions. Here I have PyTorch 2.6, which is supported. If your version is below 2.4, You'll need to uninstall it with pip uninstall torch and then reinstall it. You can find the necessary command on the ComfyUI GitHub page. Just paste it and the new version of PyTorch will be installed. Next, we'll clone the Flux Trainer repository. Make sure your virtual environment is activated, then navigate to the custom nodes folder by typing cd custom underscore nodes. followed by git clone and pasting the GitHub repository link. After cloning, navigate to the Comfy UI Flux Trainer folder and type a pip install rrequirements.txt to install the required libraries. If everything installs without errors, you're good to go. If you're using the portable version, Make sure to run this code in the Comfy UI Windows portable folder. Now we're ready to load the workflow. You can find it in the examples folder. Download it and load it into your Comfy UI web interface. Here's the first look at the workflow. You might see a lot of new custom nodes that you're not familiar with, but we'll simplify things. I prefer workflows that are simple yet effective to avoid errors. Let's start with the first group. This area is where you load the dataset. There are three train dataset add nodes for different image sizes, 512 by 512, 768 by 768, and 1024 by 1024. Each one has a place where you set the path to your dataset folder. In our case, we have seven images of a Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 handbag, all sized at 512 by 512. I also created captions for each image using Florence2, and it's important to name each caption file the same as its corresponding image. For example, 1.png should be paired with 1.txt. You can find more information about dataset preparation in a previous video on training AI models using Flux and a cloud GPU. Link in the description. For now, let's copy the path of that folder and paste it here. Below that, there's a section for setting a trigger word if you want. Including a trigger word in your prompt 
helps the model incorporate specific features, styles, or subjects that the LoRa was trained on, allowing for fine-tuned, generated results. For now, we'll stick with the 512 by 512 images to optimize VRAM usage. In the second group, we set the training parameters. In the Flux Train Model Select node, you need to pick a Flux model. Flux 1 Dev is the best, but there are also FP16 and FP8 versions. If you have 24 gigabytes of VRAM or less, FP8 is the best choice. Also, make sure the VAE is the non-diffusers version. You can download it from the GitHub page and place it in the VAE folder. We also need the Clip L and the Text Encoder. FP8 would be great for these. One of the great things about training lures on ComfyUI is that you can use the same models you use for generating images, so there's no need to download extra large files that take up a lot of space. To avoid any errors during training, we're going to remove the Flux Train Validation Settings node, which generates example images at certain training steps. While this feature is useful, it currently causes errors and can interrupt the training process, so it's safer to eliminate it. I also find the Artifactor Optimizer works better than the default one and doesn't cause issues. Now, let's move to the Init Flux LoRa training node. This is where the LoRa configuration happens. Start by giving your LoRa a name, then set the path where you want your LoRa's to be saved. I'm using the same dataset path. For both network dimension and alpha, we're setting them to 64. To explain briefly, think of network dimension as the size of your drawing paper. Larger paper allows more details, while smaller paper keeps things simpler. In LoRa training, network dimension determines how much detail the model learns. Network alpha is like how bold your pencil strokes are. A higher alpha makes the learned features stand out more, while a lower alpha keeps them subtle. I'm experimenting with 64 for each, but you could lower the network alpha to 16 and still get good results. Training steps are like practice rounds for the model. During each step, the model adjusts and learns more about the features you want it to generate. For flux models, 2,000 to 3,000 training steps usually produce high-quality results without overfitting. Since we're using 512 by 512 images, we can leave T5 attention mask enabled, which helps the model focus on the most meaningful parts of the text. Also in flux, split mode allows the model to use both the CPU and GPU which reduces the load on the GPU and saves VRAM. Next, you'll see four training groups. You need to set how often to save a LoRa in the train loop node. Since we have 2,000 steps in total, setting it to save every 500 steps will produce four LoRas that we can test. We're also removing the sampling nodes as we won't be using them. All right, we've set our parameters and cleaned up the workflow for efficiency. Now, all we need to do is launch the training process. Before that, I forgot to convert the sample prompts input to a widget since we won't be using it. The training has started and you can monitor it in the Comfy UI terminal here. The first step is loading the images, models, and training settings. This doesn't take long, and then the actual training will begin. As you can see, our training has started. Each iteration is taking about 8 seconds. An iteration is one cycle through a batch of training data, where the model learns and updates itself. With 2,000 steps, we'll need approximately 4 hours and 30 minutes to complete training. You can also monitor VRAM consumption on the left in Task Manager. The maximum value with these settings is around 10 gigs, so an 8 gigabytes card, or to be safe, 12 gigabytes, should work fine. If you're new to Comfy UI and looking for a beginner course to help you go from the basics 
all the way to creating your own AI digital model for social media, visit the link below to get 40% off the course today. If you have a GPU with 16 gigs, 22 gigs, or 24 gigabytes of VRAM, you can use settings that will produce better output since you have more VRAM. Instead of 512 by 512 images, you can use 1024 by 1024. In the InitFlux LoRa training node, change the output folder and disable both the T5 attention mask and split mode. When running this configuration, you'll notice higher VRAM usage, around 20 gigs, but also a lower time per iteration, down to about 2.7 seconds. The data loss is also reduced to 0.2, which is ideal for us. Training will be faster and produce better quality results. Once training is complete, you can find your LoRa files in your output folder, copy the last two saved files, and move them to the ComfyUI LoRa folder within the Models folder. Let's now test the first 512 by 512 trained LoRa model. To do this, I'm generating images with a resolution of 1024 by 1024 in batches of four to observe multiple variations in each generation. In a simple flux workflow, I'm loading the first LoRa and setting the strength to one. The prompt primarily focuses on our character and includes the trigger word, to bring the handbag into the generated output. After generating the images with the LoRa strength set to 1, I immediately noticed that the overall image quality was lower and the handbag wasn't quite accurate compared to the target product. This indicates that the LoRa strength might be too high, causing inconsistencies, so we need to reduce the strength a bit. After adjusting the LoRa strength, I generated new images, and the results showed a noticeable improvement in quality. However, only the second image managed to capture some of the characteristics of the Louis Vuitton handbag, and even then it wasn't quite what we were aiming for. To further improve the results, I would recommend lowering the network alpha value to around 16, which would make the learned features more subtle. Additionally, enhancing the dataset by using higher quality images, adding more samples, and increasing the training steps to around 3000 would likely yield better results. Now, let's move on to testing the 1024 by 1024 dataset. Keep in mind that we only used around five images to train this LoRa, which limits its ability to generalize effectively. Using the same prompt, but with the 1024 by 1024 train model at a LoRa strength of 0.6, the overall quality of the image is significantly better. The graininess that was present in the previous attempts is no longer an issue and the images are much cleaner. However, the handbag still lacks some of the key features we want to replicate, indicating there's room for improvement. To address this, I decided to focus more on the handbag in my positive prompt adding extra descriptive details about the product. By including a detailed description of the handbag that matches the reference images used during training, I observed substantial improvements. More intricate details from the reference images began appearing in the generated output, making the results much closer to what we intended. Now, I'll switch to a higher resolution of 1408 by 1408 to see if this can further enhance the image quality and improve the accuracy of the handbag's depiction. Generating two images at this resolution will take approximately 2 minutes and 30 seconds on a GPU with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. The image quality has visibly improved and we're getting closer to the desired outcome. The final image in particular is almost perfect. Compared to the original handbag, the details are highly accurate. The silver chain is well-defined, the shoulder strap looks good, and the Louis Vuitton design and pattern are faithfully represented. This is a significant step forward, and it shows that with the right combination of resolution, dataset quality, and prompt details, we can achieve a very high level of accuracy in our generated outputs. That's all for today. I hope this tutorial was helpful. 
If you want to download all the necessary files, prompts, and workflows, consider subscribing to my membership through the link below. You'll get access to all past and future resources, and it's a great way to support the channel. For beginners, don't forget I've extended the 40% discount on my AI digital model course using ComfyUI. This course will walk you through everything from installation to creating your first AI digital model. Be sure to check it out in the link below. See you in the next tutorial.